My research involves looking at how ice sheets and glaciers break. One of the things that we observed right around 2002, which is shocking, was the Larsen Ice Shelf in the Antarctic Peninsula, it's a tiny little ice shelf. But as far as anybody knows, it had sat, sat there happily for 10,000 years, possibly a lot longer. Then over about six weeks, culminating in March 2002, the entire ice shelf completely disintegrated. So just gone. And so we have these extremely rapid events that have potential to change the picture. That we, the way we've always thought about ice sheets is that they change really rapidly. When you think about things over a century, we normally ignore the ice sheets like we used to because it's going to change really slowly. That's the way we used to think about it. But this type of event completely upended our thinking about that. That you can have really rapid changes that occur over days, weeks, maybe even less than a day. So these are pretty dramatic changes. We have an idea, we have a theory about how this happened, but we can't predict it yet. What are the likelihood that it happens to a different ice shelf? What if it happens to one of the really big ice shelves? Then what's going to happen? We know that ice sheets are these huge masses of ice and they've been there for a long time. And then we have smaller glaciers that have also been there for a while, but not quite as long. And the way they lose mass is it can either melt or bits of ice can break off. And if it's in contact with the ocean, they float away and then they eventually melt. And it turns out for the major ice sheets, Greenland and Antarctica, a significant portion of their mass is lost by breaking, by iceberg calving is what we call it. It's about 50%, maybe as high as 70%, but it's very uncertain and it's a huge amount of mass. And it's really significant because we occasionally get these icebergs that are the size of Massachusetts, close to the size of Texas sometimes, that break off all of a sudden. Then they float off, they can interrupt shipping lanes, they eventually melt into the ocean, and this is an important process that we need to understand. The biggest question that we're looking at is really how much are the ice sheets going to contribute to sea level rise over the next century or so? If you live close to the ocean, you probably want to know if sea level is going to rise by a meter or two, which is the upper end of the estimates, or maybe only five or 10 or 20 centimeters, which seems unlikely given what we've observed but we can't entirely rule it out. This is one piece of the effects of global warming and one piece of the impacts of global warming. We don't really understand how increased surface temperatures, atmospheric temperatures, or ocean temperatures are going to affect the ice sheets. But if you move enough hot air or hot water close to the ice sheets, we know it's going to melt, right? So this is a big part of that puzzle. And once you start melting those ice cubes, you're adding fresh water, and you're changing the system. And whether that's a positive or a negative feedback is interesting, but we don't really know quite yet.